So this is limiting reagent stoichiometry. If you haven't watched the previous video on stoichiometry, I recommend you do that because we're going to be using a lot of the same techniques in this video and things will be a lot clearer. This here is Johnny and he works in a bike shop and he's charged with assembling bikes. And what he needs to know first off is how many tires he would need to buy if he has 25 bike frames in the shop. Well, the reaction for building bikes is two tires plus one bike frame equals one bike. The ratio is two to one for tires to bike frames. So if he has 25 bike frames, he's going to need 50 tires to build 25 bikes. It's a two to one to two ratio. This is what stoichiometry is all about. We are able to calculate how many tires, which is a reactant, Johnny needs because we know the ratio of the tires to bike frames. And that's really what stoichiometry comes down to, mole ratios and chemical reactions. So instead of buying tires, let's assume that the shop already has tires in it. So we're going to assume that he already has bike frames and tires in the shop. When doing inventory, he finds that there are 250 tires and 100 bike frames. How many bikes can Johnny build? Now you might already know the answer, but stay with me here. There are two tires for every one bike frame, and that will give us one bike. So if he starts with 250 tires, he can make 125 bikes from just the tires. If he starts with just 100 bike frames, he can make only 100 bikes. Now what you can see here is since he has 250 tires and 100 bike frames that he is not going to be able to build 125 bikes because he needs 125 bike frames. He can build 100 bikes because he only needs 200 tires. Clearly he can't use all the tires, all 250, because he's limited by the number of bike frames. The key word here is limited. He is short 25 frames. He has excess tires once he uses up all the bike frames. He's got 50 excess tires. So what we're introducing here is the idea of a limiting reactant and a, and a excess reactant. So now let's put it together into a chemical reaction. This is the synthesis of water. And the mole ratio from the, from the reaction of water is 2 to 1 to 2 because it's two hydrogen molecules, one oxygen molecule to make two water molecules. That means if you have 100 moles of hydrogen, you'll need 50 moles of oxygen to make 100 moles of water. So let's say you have 200 moles of hydrogen and 50 moles of oxygen. How many moles of water can we produce? Remember, the ratio is 2 to 1 to 2. So if we have 200 moles of hydrogen, we would need 100 moles of oxygen, and that would produce 200 moles of water but we only have 50 moles of oxygen, which means we're only going to use 100 moles of the hydrogen, and therefore we'll only produce 100 moles of oxygen. 100 moles of water is what we can produce in this reaction. Hydrogen is the excess reagent. We actually have 100 excess moles. Oxygen is the limiting reagent. We're short 50 moles to react all 200 moles of the hydrogen. So we're going to put this all together into a stoichiometry problem. And you're going to see how these limiting and excess reagents play out here once we're done with this. So we're going to react 250 grams of hydrogen with 400 grams of oxygen. And we want to first figure out what is the limiting reagent and then how many grams of water can be produced. Again, here's our reaction. And what we're doing is we're creating a stoichiometry table. Now in the previous video, we created a stoichiometry table with five rows. This one actually has six because we're adding a new component to it, the idea of a limiting and excess reagent. So we're just going to draw our grid here. And in the top row was the reaction. The second row is the grams. The third row is the molar mass. Then we have moles. And we have ratio. And the new row is the need, the need row. So we're going to put our reaction in. H2 plus O2 makes H2O. And you'll notice I didn't use the coefficients because we're going to take care of that in the ratio. We have 200 grams of hydrogen, 400 grams of oxygen. That's given in the problem. The molar masses are 2 grams for hydrogen, 32 grams for oxygen, 18 grams for water. The ratio is 2 to 1 to 2. And remember, the way we use these stoichiometry tables is we divide going down, we multiply going up. So 200 divided by 2 
will give us 100 moles. So we have 100 moles of water. Now, the ratio is 2 to 1, so we're going to need 50 moles. But when we divide 400 by 32, we only have 12.5. We have less moles than we need. That's why I circled them there. So the oxygen is limiting. Therefore, the hydrogen's excess. Now, in predicting the amount of product formed, we always use the limiting reactant. It's a 1 to 2 ratio, which means that since we had 12.5 moles of the limiting reactant, we're going to need 25 moles of water or product. Multiplying going up times 18 gives us 450 grams of water. So 450 grams of water is produced. Now what you should notice here is mass is not conserved like in the previous ones. This is because not all of the hydrogen reacted. In fact, only 100 and, uh, sorry, only 50 grams of the hydrogen reacted. There's 150 grams excess here. Uh, you can calculate this by subtracting the mass of the product water, 450 grams, from the total mass of the reactants, which is 200 plus 400 grams, or 600 grams. 600 minus 450 gives us 150 grams of excess material. Or, another way to look at it is 75 moles of excess hydrogen never made it over to the product side. Therefore, the mass is not the same on both the products and the reactant side. Now, this is the real difference between a limiting reagent stoichiometry problem and a regular stoichiometry problem. In the regular stoichiometry problem, the mass is always conserved. The mass of the products equals the mass of the reactants, and vice versa. In a limiting reagent stoichiometry, one of the components is excess. It doesn't all get used up. And the key thing when doing a limiting reagent stoichiometry problem is to figure out what the excess and what the limiting reactant is, because it's the limiting reactant that will determine the amount of product produced in the chemical reaction.